أمير سلام جول كيبر أمير عابد زادة جول كيبر أوبون فرادينا أنا يرى ناشنال تيم إكس جول كيبر أو بيرسيبوليس راهان باريرينسي أند ماريتيمو ويلكم تو في الجول ثانك يو فور انفايتينغ مي أم جلاد تو بي هير هوب وي كان هاف ا نايس تشات You were the first ever player of Maritimo to be part of a World Cup squad. Uh, now I suppose that you will be the first ever player of Bonferradina to do so. Should we expect another record for the 2026 edition? <laughs> um, yeah, it's an honor to um, be part of a club and to be the first to go to the World Cup. But uh, always everything that I did, in my career and in my football. One of the reasons was to inspire as well. So my path uh, in Maritimo could have led to more players in the future to go to their national team with their countries. And I think same here, we have really good players that are <clears throat> talented and can go to their national team and be part of World Cup. But for 2026, um, I'm always trying to improve, you know, and hopefully in that time I'm playing in a really good league uh, and a good team that has many players, not only me, to participate in the most important uh, competition in the world. Okay, let's talk about it, uh, Bonferradina first. Last season was your first in Spain and it was amazing for you individually and uh, also for the team. Did you expect such an historic season when you joined the club? Well, I always wanted to come to Spain and, you know, uh, I, had, I reached a career in my... Uh, I reached a point in my career in Portugal where everything was the same and I needed a new challenge and I always wanted to come to Spain. It was my dream. And, you know, it's not easy to come as a player who's a extra community and it, only in our league in Liga Smart Bank it's only two players that can come and to to you know for a club to get a goalkeeper it's really rare so when I had the offer I couldn't say no and the club explained really well the ambition because it was the century of the club so they wanted to do a special season but I think everything went well uh, I really started well like five games, five win I had and I think uh, it was a really special season. Uh, this season we haven't started as well as last season but I'm hoping I can have the same consistency and do a good season like last year. As you say, this season is more complicated. The club has published an official statement because of the arbitral errors. How do you see the situation with the referees this season? Yeah, I mean, uh, myself, I'm not a player who complains a lot. I think there has been mistakes uh, from the referees, but it'd be like, okay, they uh, impacted the results. I think we need to be so good that even if the referees make mistakes, it doesn't uh, have anything to do with our results and we win the games anyway. So I think uh, my focus personally is to work on myself so I can help my team and keep my uh, you know sheets clean and I can help the team so we can get the points oh, I don't really care about the excuses the referee the wind the grass these things I personally think we need to become a better team be more united so the result uh, come as well along the way. You previously had a trial at Arsenal uh, when you were a teenager? It wasn't Arsenal, it was Tottenham. I was there in the academy under 18 and I had trials with Brentford when I was 14. Uh, it was a really good time. <clears throat> I learned a lot. I was also studying back then when I was living in England. Uh, but because of visa situations, I couldn't sign there and they went for an Italian option at the same time who was with me in Tottenham. But uh, all of these, you know, um, obstacles along my way have created the Amir I am today. So I'm 
grateful for all the things that happened. I went to USA, then I went back to Iran, then I went to Portugal, and now I'm Spain. I think everything that happened made the Amir that I'm, I am today, and I'm looking forward for new challenges, for things that come along my way so I can improve and become a better goalkeeper and reach my dreams and goals. Uh, did you coincide with the famous players back then in Tottenham? Yeah, Harry Kane was in, in the team that I was playing, I think. And it's funny how we got, uh, we're going to face in the World Cup. So let's see. Uh, you were joined Persepolis in uh, 2012. I'm not sure, but did you work with uh, the Portuguese coach uh, Manuel Jose? And he was in Egypt, no? He was in Egypt. He went. Yeah, actually, I had an Egyptian goalkeeper coach. That was that was my next question, Ahmad Nagy. Yeah, Ahmad Nagy, very nice guy. Yeah, I actually went and signed in first police. I was young, I was playing a lot in the US, and I don't know if it was the best options, but as I said, all the things that happened in my career was meant to be, so I become the Amir I am today. But yeah, I worked with him. He honestly didn't have the best uh, experience in Iran because we didn't do good uh, result-wise but I don't think he has too much fault because the management back then he bought so many star players and we were not divided well so I think we had like eight star strikers and two midfielders that came to Persepolis his big club on a trial so it was not all his fault, but he didn't have the results. And, uh, at the end of the day, it was a short experience for him. But I think when he went back to Egypt, he did well again. Uh, when I went to Portugal, I understood uh, that he has a big name in Portugal. And I'm glad that I had the chance to be his student. And how was working with uh, Ahmed Nagy, the goalkeeper coach? A very nice guy, very... Um, happy person, he transmitted the energy, he taught me some things that helped me along the way and I'm, I think I can't remember but as I told you I don't have the best memory but I think uh, I spoke to him a few times in Facebook just to say hi, as I say a very nice guy and I'm really glad that I had the chance to uh, learn a lot of things from him. Allow me to talk about uh, your father, Ahmad Reda Abidzada, the Eagle of Asia, arguably the best Iranian goalkeeper of all time, maybe alongside Nasser Hijazi. It's nice to learn from the best, uh, but people tend, people tend to have uh, major expectations and cruel judgments. Uh, if you miss a ball, they won't say he, he don't have the level. They will say he is playing thanks to his father. Is that argument made you insist in succeed far from Iran? Well, me coming outside Iran was always in my head even when I was a kid, you know, even when I was in England, when I went play and when I was a child, I always saw myself that I can play in Europe and I really enjoy, enjoyed it. And <clears throat> the reason, one of the main reasons that I went back to Iran was to be invited to the national team of under 23 because I was 19 back then so I'll have a better resume to come to Europe for me in my head always was to come to uh, Europe and especially Spain that's why I chose to come from uh, Maritimo to come to Adina. and it was all because I had a vision I had a dream to play in La Liga and I want to make it happen one day but the fact that I had the pressure of my father's name. Yeah, it was it was with me, but I kind of adapted and I made it as a strength in my career because I understood that whatever I do, they, there will be like talks, there will be criticism, or there will be people that even might uh, say nice things about you. But at the end of the day, what I do matters and. Uh, for me to put so much focus on, for example, when I do a good thing, people say, oh, he, it's obvious he, ha he has to do it because it's, he, uh, he's the son of his father. Or when I do bad thing, they say, no, he will never be his father. And these are where just distraction. And for me, 
in the beginning the pressure really made me strong and now I enjoy the pressure but I understand at the same time that I have my own path and I also see a lot of examples in the today's World Cup like Kasper Schmeichel and when I see his interviews he has these things as well for example in the World Cup 2018 he made many great uh, games but when it comes to the um, you know conference conference room two three questions he was asked was it about his player and he understand that this is gonna be there anyway for us as the players who come from uh, who are who we have the father who was a legend it's a bit harder but at the same time it's very nice because I can learn a lot of things from him or you can say uh, he comes with the same genes so these are all of nice beliefs that can help me and I try to focus on the positive things more than the negative you insist that you have bad memory, but um, do you have any memories of uh, 1998 World Cup when your father participated? Yeah, I actually I have a flashback of the qualification. You yeah, know, it was 1997, and it was against Australia, which was one of my father's best game. They were losing, like he made 10 saves, but they were losing two two nil. And I remember that my mother took me and my sister outside the house because she couldn't watch it anymore and it was like done for, for us. And when we went to the street, we were driving, but then after a while we saw people are dancing in the street and everyone are giving things, you know, music and stuff like this. Then we asked, we say, what happened? Like, why are you celebrating? They say the game was 2-2 and we qualified. So we went and we spice, bought some like little chocolates and spread it around the people to celebrate. This is a really memory that I have uh, from the childhood. But I remember also the game against USA that uh, we won. And yeah, but not that much clear, yeah. I don't know if he ever talked to you about that game against USA. He always says that politics shouldn't interfere in, with sports. But you know, players are humans. Uh, was it hard for him, for the players? I mean, lots of pressure, um, more than any other game in the history. I've seen that game many times more. Not live, but uh, I mean, I repeated versions. And one of the things that I noticed is that like I learned from my father was that he was really focused. So even when he's doing something right now, when he wants to do something, no matter how many people talk to him, he won't hear it because he's fully focused. I think uh, the politics back then uh, around that game didn't really affect my father and he was really focused. That's why he did a really good game. But I think it, uh, him as a captain there, also transfer this to the other players and that's why the, they got the result that they wanted. At the end, is, what matters is the happiness of our people in our country. Uh, all politics aside, that, that's what matters and I, I'm really proud that 1998 uh, Iran football team would make the people really happy. That I'm going to show you a video and I want your uh, comment and reaction. I'm saying one of the best moments in my career especially in my national team. We qualified, it was our fastest qualification for World Cup and I could help the team, you know, participate more because I've been in the national team a few years, but uh, didn't have a chance to really, you know, uh, participate and, you know, transmit uh, my energy into the team. But the fact that I could help the team to qualify and, you know, play in 
play in my home country, Al-Jadi Stadium. It was really special for me. And uh, at the end of the game, when we were celebrating, I knew my father was in the stands watching. So I was like waiting for him to come. And I was a little bit anxious because I really wanted him to come. And it was kind of over. Everyone was left, but I waited. Then all of a sudden, I was, I think, with one of my teammates. But when I turned, I saw him there. So I just had that reaction. I just went to him. And that moment happened. And uh, it was really special. You were there in uh, 2018. Iran was such a solid team. So hard to be defeated. What are your um, memories of that amazing experience? Yeah, it was a really good World Cup. Even though we didn't qualify, I think we really satisfied our people and made our people proud and happy. We had a really tough group. We started really well with the win against Morocco and that gave us a lot of hope to continue. And uh, We had the unlucky uh, loss against Spain. We drew against Portugal, so it was a really good result. And the other teams in other groups, they, they were like teams that qualified with three points, and we had four points and we couldn't go. So it was just the bad timing uh, to have uh, you know, uh, four points in that group, but we did really well. And when we came back to our country, the, the people really greeted us well, and it showed that. We, they understood that we did whatever we could do and I think it was it's a really good experience 2018 um, achievements that will really help us uh, next World Cup which is the next month. Carlos Karush is back as you may know he was about to reach the World Cup with our national team Egypt how do you feel about working with him again? I've had the privilege to work with him many years he was the first coach that called me for national team. I think all the players really like uh, things that he believes in. He brings a really good discipline with the team. And we needed this, you know, to be more organized, more united. And I think some of it comes from the discipline. And I really hope that we can make a really good work. Of and I think I see it as a sign that if a coach that worked with us many years, comes back in the last moments before World Cup. I just, I just see it as a sign, I think. It was meant to be that comes and with the knowledge that he has from players and our country, he can guide us and us players, we are really motivated and we are really united to come and do a really World Cup and to make our people happy. You know, because, uh, a lot of things are happening in my country and people are not really happy. And I see it as a duty to, even if I can make one person happy, I do my best to focus so I can be uh, happy. Hopefully, you know, we can change the energy in our country. Yeah, great. But um, you played more with uh, the former coach Dragan Skosic. How do you see this? Yeah, it's true because uh, the fact that the timing, I think, is uh, I was, for example, I had a really good season after Carlos Queiroz left. I had two, two great seasons in Maritimo. I was nominated as one of the best goalkeepers in the world, in the continent. And I had an amazing season with Conferradina. Uh, I think if I had these moments when Keros was there, I would, I would also play. So I think it was just the timing, and I really appreciate the thing that uh, our former coach did for us. And uh, at the same time, I feel like uh, my competitors in the other goalkeepers, Iran national team, they moved to Europe, but they didn't play, get enough play time, so uh, I think uh, he, he took a decision that I could help the team more. I did my best, and I'm glad that we qualified for the World Cup. Uh, obviously, Mr. Kiroch is coming now, and he is the one who makes the decisions. Us players, we just have to work hard and trust that we have a leader in our team. Uh, 
this this is what makes the team more united to trust your coach and trust your teammate and know that uh, wherever plays you are you know supporting each other and you know that they're gonna do the best for their coach well uh, last question we are gonna create your perfect goalkeeper you are gonna choose one characteristic from every goalkeeper so i'm gonna um, for example tell you build up playing with the foot who do you choose ederson ederson uh, reflections reflection like you mean shot stopping or like shot stopping i will go for obla obla positioning positioning I, I i don't see him play now but a few years ago i really loved piatov piatov from ukraine the veteran ukrainian goalkeeper uh, footwork Footwork, since I give the build up to Ederson, I would go for Terstig. Terstig. Dealing with the crosses. Crosses. For me, crosses, right now what I see is Nick Pope is really good. For example, he's not great with feet, but because of his height, he's, uh, he's really great in the aerial duel. Personality? Casper Schmeier. Penalties. Penalties. I love Diego Alves. Diego Alves. Yeah, Valente. Um, scoring abilities. Scoring abilities. I would go for Neuer. We used to see goalkeepers was uh, with a ter terrific scoring abilities like uh, Jose Luis Chela, Vert, Rogério Ceni, Hans Jörg Bot. But it's not the case these days. You personally don't have uh, the temptation of scoring goals. It's not, it's not true that we are not willing to, it's the fact that the game has improved so much, you know. For example, if a goalkeeper comes out and do a free kick and there is a rebound, the game has improved so much that with just few passes, players can score. But I don't think back then, uh, you know, it was like this. Even, for example, Maradona, uh, may he rest in peace, when he used to dribble, Defending system was way different than it is now, you know. Uh, so I think the, the game has improved so much. Or even the crosses, for example, Peter Schmeichel would come out the crosses so easy. But the way they crossed the balls right now, I think it's even the balls or the grass, how the ball is so wet. The game has improved so much, and you can't really compare. You know, back then they used to score more goals. Or I don't think. You can never see like a Jorge Campos coming out dribbling and you know, you're not worried. And also the coaches, uh, the coaches knowledge also has improved so much that they wouldn't allow you to do this. For example. Uh, my coach right now, he always told me to play simple, whereas last year uh, our former coach wanted me to play, you know, some long risky ball behind the defender so I can make some key passes. So I think the control of the coaches and also the game has improved. You, you see less goalkeepers going out and scoring goals whereas now when you are one nil down you can go and try your luck. I think Alisson did it uh, against almost average. I think you see these things moments but not that often. Yeah. Well, great. Amir Abizada, uh, it was a pleasure having you on Full Gold. Pleasure is mine. Thank you for having me. This was very cool. Thank you.